Hello, and welcome to this mo video on Leslie Matrices, a new section of the General Maths course, well, at the time of recording, uh, and so I'm pretty stoked about this one. Um, my name is Darren from Maths Guru. You're going to say where? I'm going to say Maths Guru, that little corner of the internet, uh, where you can basically just watch all of the videos, uh, download everything I'm about to write on, uh, VCAR exam questions, and so, so much more. Head over there, tell your teachers and tell your mates if you can. It would be greatly appreciated. Now, learning objectives, pretty much just the one. Let's just get used to the idea of Leslie Matrices and how we we can use the sort of matrixy stuff we've already done to sort of apply it to a real world situation. Now, there's not a much of a recap other than to say in the previous video, we looked at the idea of sort of state matrices and how, you know, we're looking to go from one state to another. We could, when we were doing car examples or whatever else, add on or, you know, what was it, olive oil people were added on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the general idea of knowing how to not only understand what this recurrence relationship means, but able to use your calculator to do it is really, really important. So we're looking at state to state to state, realizing that things rarely stay the same, right? And that's, that things change is really, really important. We're so interested in what we call iterations, from one iteration to the next. Now, births, deaths, and marriages, leave marriages to one side. Let's just deal with births and deaths. Sadly, we are born and we die. I know that's pretty sad, and apologies if you are just going through a bereavement, but the whole point of it is, the human uh, species is created and we, we've got this opportunity to procreate, to reproduce, yes? But we also don't really survive. It's not like everybody who's born today will all live to the age of 100. Very different from a movie that's called Logan's Run. Very old movie. Members of staff or teachers out there who are watching this now may remember Logan's Run. It was terrifying, yes? But the general idea for Logan's Run, if I'm telling you, was that effectively by the time you reached an age of, I think it was like 25 or whatever else, you got entered into a lottery where basically they floated you up uh, with the idea that you were going to uh, ascend to a higher plane or go off to do something interesting. And all they really did was murder you. Sounds horrific, really, but then films nowadays are bad. Um, and so realistically, in that situation, everybody lived to the age of 25 or 26. By the time you got to 25, they had decided that you had reached the end of your useful life. Bye-bye, off you go. Thankfully, we don't have that here. We have the idea that, yes, we can all run our course of our life, but sadly, people pass away. Right, so Patrick Holt Leslie, uh, who's the gentleman here, looking very happy in that photo, if I do have to say so, um, basically looked at the idea of population growth and changes. Because while we do pass away and die, we actually also procreate. So at various stages in lives, people have babies, all right? I had a baby at a very late stage in life, so about the age of 40, and my daughter is now, uh, what, how is she now? Four, all right? Uh, and it's not to say that, like, my parents who had me when they were 21, um, you know, different people have babies at different times. So how does that work? How do babies feed into our population model? So for Leslie matrices, you're basically in interested in two things, birth rates and survival rates, yes? Now, a birth rate's an interesting one, all right? If we were to split the human population into age groups, and that's going to be important for Leslie matrices, we split populations into age groups, yes? We know that not everyone's going to survive, all right? Now, survival rights can be calculated, and it's going to be a value less than one. Now, if we had a survival rate of one, what that basically means is everyone lives forever, Right, so that's not gonna be useful to me and that's probably not realistic. If I have a survival rate of 0.5, it means that basically 50% of the people will survive. So if we're looking at age groups, we would probably expect survival rates to change, yes? As we got older, we'd probably think that this value here would be much, much higher. So if I was looking at the number of people who were going from 80 to 90, well, the chances are a much higher percentage of people would be passing away there than if I looked at the survival rates between 0 and 10, which we would expect to be quite high. Now, we look here at the idea of migration, and again, people turn around and say, yeah, but hold on a moment, if we're looking at age groups and people joining age groups, we could look at migration. In Australia, obviously, a lot of people migrate to Australia. That sort of throws things a little bit, and so for this video, we're going to ignore migration. We are just going to look at almost like a set of people and in fact, we're only going to look at females because females are the only people who can actually reproduce. Yes, I know they generally need males, uh, but not all cases. And so we'll leave that one there as well. But we're going to take a sample of females and over a defined period of time, look at the children which have been produced. And we can work out the average birth rate for that age group. Now, don't think, and this got my head going earlier, don't think that actual birth rates have to be a decimal less than one. 
That's not true. If you look at the number of rabbits that pop out, there's a lot of rabbits. So in that situation, it may well be that each, uh, each bunny rabbit can create eight more bunny rabbits, all right? Human populations, well, again, we would imagine that maybe the birth rates are gonna be somewhere around one, maybe two, but again, the context of the question is gonna be important. Right, showing birth rates and survival rates using a picture. This is almost like a transition diagram, and in fact, it's called a life cycle transition diagram, as we can see here. And it's quite interesting to, to work out. So the first thing is, the big circles, the ones here, are basically my age groups. That doesn't mean that people are who are one, two, and three. We've decided in this situation to split our age groups into three distinct groups. So it could be, for example, zero to three, three to six, and six to nine. Now, again, previous parts of math say we can't overlap values. In this situation for Leslie matrices, we can, all right? So these are equal ages. So if we could say zero to one, one to two, two to three, that's three years, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, and eight to nine. So those are my three distinct groupings. So this, this one here could now stand for, uh, I don't know, people who are zero to three, three to six, and six to nine. So whatever this model is, basically no one survives past nine, all right? So I don't know an animal that actually only lives for nine years or you know, generally could live for nine years, but let's say that that's what it is. This 0 0.6 here is basically my survival rate. So 60% of the people in group one will survive through to group two. So 60% of people will go from being ages zero to three and pass into three to six. Here, 30%. Now again, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, less people, the more you get older, the less you're gonna actually have people. What do these arrows mean? Well, people have babies, okay? People have babies. And so the arrow here says that in age group two, on average, for every one person, they are creating 2.3 other people. Right, so again, that could well be humans, yeah? Because it used to be that the average was 2.4 people. So every family would have 2.4 kids, the atomic family, I think it was called. All right, so, and now why does the arrow point back to age group one? Well, because they're born. And when a baby is born, how old is it? It's zero. So again, these babies are gonna join back into group one. Likewise here, 0 0.4. All right, this age group here, still able to have children, but actually fewer of them, all right? Fewer people are choosing to have babies of that age group, yeah? And in which case, for every female, they create 0.4 of a baby. So there's my diagram, yes, going that way, are survival rates, that way are my birth rates. Happy? Okay. Now, the great thing about Leslie matrices is we can write them as a matrix. Isn't that the whole point here? So I'm going to move my life cycle transition diagram. Uh, that's this one here down here. And let's see if we can now write this in terms of a matrix. So notice that Leslie matrices start with L. I'm going to write age groups 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. And again, what I'm going to write up here is start and N, because the order of this is really, really important. So it's no real surprise that B stands for survival, uh, sorry, B stands for birth and S stands for survival. So let's look at my birth rates first. From one to one, are any children born in group one? No, it would make very little sense for people who are zero years of age to then have children, right? Hopefully we would have to mature first. So in that situation, this value here is going to be zero. So let's do my diagram up here. One, two, three. One, two, three. And let's do L equals. So zero, uh, one to one, there is no birth rates. What about two to one? Birth rates from starting at two, ending at one. From two to one, is that one there? 2.3. So basically that value there now is 2.3. Now what does that actually mean? It means that on average, Every single person in that group there is producing 2.3 children. Every female is producing, on average, 2.3 uh, children, which is pretty much the average for what it used to be back in the nuclear family days in the 1980s, where every family apparently had, on average, 2.4 children. I don't quite know where the 0.4 child came from. Maybe it's just a couple of legs. A bit weird, but anyway, a bit toy story, actually. So, 
but 2.3 and it is important to notice as I say that that value can be greater than one because there are populations or there are species who have lots and lots of babies. Hamsters. I remember having a hamster when I was a child. Lots of babies. Mum's face would melt every time those, those hamsters, which we thought were two boy hamsters, had little baby hamsters. Anyway, right, what about the next one? This one here. Three to one. Is there a connection from three to one? Yes, it is that there. 0 0.4, so there we go, that is 0 0.4. There are my birth rates. Now what about my survival rates? And again, we are just looking for connections. So let's look at this first S1 here. And you'll notice those are all zeros, which I'll explain in a moment. From one to two, is there a connection from one to two in survival? Well, the survival rates are the ones that go across here, 0 0.6. Yep, so that's now gonna be 0 0.6. The reason the next two are zero is, is there anything going from two to two? Yeah? Well, survival rates, we're always going to pass from one age group into another. We're not going to basically stay the same age, aren't we? It doesn't make sense for any percentage of a population to stay the same age. I mean, we can lie about our age by all means, but no. So that becomes zero and that becomes zero. Likewise, from if we look at the three to two, is there any way that we can grow, grow younger? Probably not. So again, that's going to be a zero. That's going to be a zero because there's no one going straight from one to three. So if we look here, one to three, one to three, is there anything? No. Again, we can't skip an age group. We have to grow older by sections. So our S2 is going from two to three. Uh, no, let's try that one again. Yeah, from two to three. Two to three is that one there. That's 0 0.3. So that's going to be 0 0.3. And that's also going to be zero. Now, again, the way I tend to remember this is that that there are my birth rates. So those are the ones going backwards. And diagonally are my survival rates.